So today we're going to work on our foil sager preparation. I already have a piece here that I've already preliminarily started to wrap and get ready for the foil sager. This piece here that I'm going to put in front of it is actually a finished piece. So this one has gone through the foil sager. It went up to about 1300 degrees. And you can see there's different impressions. I just grabbed some Palo Verde from outside that I'm wrapping tightly on this one. This one was a little looser. So we'll see if we can get more of uh, a leaf pattern. And you can see the different smoke permeates the sigillata, if you remember the video on burnishing and polishing. This line here is from wire. And so we're going to wrap this piece up similar, and I'll talk about a couple of the different chemicals, and then we'll see what we get. So, so far, this is a piece that's been terracidged, just like, and polished a little bit, not super polished. And I've already put copper wire on it. Copper can cause some fuming. It can bring out some effects. The Palo Verde has already been compressed on there with the wire wrapped around it. I also put some steel wool. Steel wool, I, and I'm reusing this piece. Um, when it's compressed really tightly and it volatizes, it, it can leave a pattern also. In my bowl here, I have a mixture of copper sulfate and Epsom salt. So I'm gonna be putting this in with the foil. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of sawdust. Last time I put a lot of sawdust in, so this became really black. I'm going to put a little bit less this time and see if I can get a little bit lighter result. So I'm going to pick up this piece and already I'm leaving some other copper and a little bit more leaf at the bottom and I'm just going to dust this, spread this out a little bit. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the sawdust and then we're going to put the piece there and we're going to wrap it up. So all the materials will not escape from the foil. And then I'm going to push on it to make sure that that steel wool is touching the pot and that those leaves are pushing on there. So I want it a little bit tight. And the main thing to be careful of with the copper wire is none of the pointed ends are sticking out because it could cut a hole in the, in the foil. So I, today I'm using this for my sager. So I have a can that I've already used before. This is going to go in the raccoon kiln. It has a little bit of sawdust in it too, to help with fuming for smoke. I'm just going to place this in here. Normally, once um, a group, as a group of students, as you get your pieces ready, we'll be using a larger guard, larger can, and we'll be putting them in one of the larger gas kilns. But this is just for this piece by itself. I'm actually going to take a little bit of the copper and Epsom salt and dust the foil a little bit and to see if I can get a little bit more fuming that way. And then add a little bit of sawdust to the top. And this piece is ready. Now here's another part of this process. If you fire your piece and you're unhappy and we have time, we can refire. We can also re-bisque it and it'll come back out white again and then we can do this all over again. So you, can, you have multiple chances with this process. So I'm gonna take this out in the raccoon kiln I, I put two broken shells on the top, so they're just a couple little openings so the smoke can get released. And then go up to 1300 degrees in about an hour and a half. Leave it overnight, then unwrap it, and we'll see if I get a little bit lighter result or a similar result to this. So that is the basics on getting a piece ready for foil sager. We will talk about other materials you can add like banana peels and coffee grounds in class. So here, if you look down, this is the piece that we fired in the video. And you can see where, where the foil is wrapped with the different combustible materials. You can see the response of the Epsom salt and a little bit of the copper sulfate. Actually, this piece, if you remember right, was a light white. Now it's a little bit more bluish green. And here's where the Palo Verde was pressed against it. So it did give me a ghost effect. So next time, I'm going to compress even more Palo Verde on the next piece and see if we can get more of that result. So I just wanted to show you the piece that we finished. 